Hello, cats and kitties. It is your friendly neighborhood headbanger here, Terry. And it's been a minute since I've made a video. I think the last time you guys saw me, I think it was right before Christmas. So I hope that you had a wonderful Christmas. I hope that you had a happy new year that you got to celebrate with your friends and family. And that, um, you know, I hope 2022 is going to be better. We've had a rough couple of last years, but... It seems like that things are slowly but surely getting better. We just have to think about each other and do what we would want done for us. And I think generally speaking, that's a good a good theory to have. Just do what you would want done to you. If you don't want to be carjacked, don't carjack anybody. I mean, it's just that simple. Okay, so what is the subject of today's video? I am going to do a What I Got for Christmas haul, but that is not today's video. Today's video is going to be about something that maybe some of you guys are thinking about now that the new year is here. And today's video is going to be about forgiveness. Forgiveness is not always an easy thing to do. It is an easier thing to do if the slight against you has been, well, slight. Like someone hid your car keys or someone made you late uh, for an engagement by talking to you for too long or maybe some someone cut you off in traffic or whatever. You know, those types of things are fairly easy to forgive. And uh, we have a saying in society called forgive and forget. And it is the stupidest saying we could have come up with. It is the absolutely most useless platitude on the planet. And that is because if you have something that you're really going to have to work at to forgive. You're probably not going to forget it. So I think we just need to say forgive and let go, not forgive and forget. Forgive and forget is uh, ridiculously stupid. Our mind has the capacity for just an incredible memory. The things that you remember on a daily basis that you don't even think about is astounding. You remember how to get up out of bed. You remember how to fix your breakfast. You remember how to make coffee. You remember your mind retains really just inane things, just really trivial things. So how much more does it retain things that are of significance to you? Uh, on the positive side, like uh, getting married, having a child, uh, anniversary dates that symbolize a meaningful event to you, and yes, things that have hurt you. Things that have hurt you deeply to a point where maybe they changed the way you felt about yourself, maybe they changed the way that you felt about your life or just life in general. Those are not the kind of things you can forget. And so, I never would say to someone, were I to get my license uh, with my counseling degree and practice, I would never say to someone, forgive and forget. Because if you can completely forget uh, any uh, harsh realities or traumas, if you completely forget them, then that's a sign of a coping, coping mechanism issue. Um, maybe dissociation or something like that. So you're not ever going to completely forget with a healthy mind. What you can do is let go. You can let go of any perceived responsibility that you had. Now, I'm going to take, for example, a hurt that I, I experienced. Someone hurt me very badly several years ago. Uh, they did not think, I don't think, that they were doing anything to me. I don't think they thought that I was going to be a part of, uh, that they were affecting me in any way. Um, but they did affect me, and it affected how I saw myself, how I saw that person, how I saw our relationship, and it was very, very difficult uh, on me. And I said uh, at the time, um, I basically said, you broke me. I am broken. Now, I wasn't broken. I made it out the other side of that, and I was okay. But I was also very angry. And I thought, do I not have the right to be angry? Uh, this thing was done to me, and it hurt me deeply. And the coffee maker thinks I have a right to be angry. Anyway, do I not have a right to be angry about this? Because this thing was done to me. Um, here's the thing about anger. Even righteous anger can can spoil and go bad. I'm not saying there isn't a place for righteous anger. There is. There is a place for that. Um, 
my anger towards that person was somewhat righteous. It had hurt me. It was not a good thing to do. And their actions did cause pain in my life. However, anger, as the old saying goes, is like drinking poison and waiting for someone else to die. And, you know, letting that thing get to you is another saying is living rent free in your head and trashing the place. Um, if you hold on to anger, it doesn't get better with age. It's not wine. What it does is it turns you bitter. And it turns you specifically bitter towards that person and anything that you ever did with that person. Um, and that's, that's not cool. I mean, you know, I have had some wonderful times with this person and continue now to have wonderful times with this person now that I have forgiven them. So what does it mean to forgive? Forgiveness is not so much a thing as it is an action. And it's not an action that takes place overnight, unless, you know, it's the aforementioned, where did you put my car keys type thing. But if it is something that has traumatized you or hurt you, hurt you deeply, you're not going to do it overnight. And anyone who thinks, and sometimes churches are guilty of this, and I say this as a Christian, anyone who thinks that you can forgive just boom like that uh, doesn't understand that we are not Jesus. We're just not. And it's going to take us a little bit more processing. And the process might take weeks, months, years. It literally could take years. If the trauma is big enough and deep enough and hard enough, it could very well take years. It has taken me, <clears throat> excuse me, thought I was going to sneeze for a minute, but I didn't. Um, it has taken me years to completely forgive this person. Um, I've remained friends with this person. We're close. We're very close. Uh, but it has taken me a while to completely uh, let go of that. And here's where I mean um, letting go. Letting go of a hurt means giving it back to the person it belongs to. Forgiveness means that you no longer let that activity and that person's attitude toward the activity rule your life. It doesn't mean you forget it, and it absolutely doesn't mean you excuse it. Forgiveness is not excusing. You don't excuse trauma. Forgiveness means that you hand that trauma back to them where it belongs. It never, never should have been put on you. The actions, the emotions, the things that that trauma caused you are things that the person who traumatized you should be holding on to. So you give that back to them and you allow yourself to live your life without carrying that around. That type of baggage is super heavy and it is... The type of thing that drags you down. You can't step lightly while you're carrying it. You can't run to the things that you enjoy while carrying it. It takes up every fiber of your of your being and your strength to carry it along. And until you set it down and walk away from it, you don't realize how heavy it is. Um, are there moments when I still feel little twinges of something about this person and what they did? Yeah, there are. And that's when I have to go back and sort of go through the process again. Not as much as I did the original time. Not as much as I did when I was working through the anger the first time around. But I have to remind myself, Terry, that's in the past. You walked away from that. You let it go. That doesn't have a place in your life now. Your life is in the present. Live your life. And when I do that, and when I say that to myself, I am allowing myself to set that down to give that back to the person that should be carrying it, not me. I don't excuse, and I don't forget, because I'm just not going to forget. Um, even if I wanted to forget, I'm one of those people that has a steel trap memory, and it's not an eidetic memory. I can't, you know, it's not like a photographic memory, but I do remember things really well, and I'm not going to forget that. So it's not a forget thing. It's a put it in its place thing. Now, when I say put it in its place, you can't do that until you work through the anger. A lot of people want to put things back in a box before they go through the forgiveness process. 
And I tried to do that originally with this. And what happens is when you put something in a box and you try to put it away, it will claw its way out. Unless you've dealt with it and neutralized it, it will absolutely claw its way back out. And when it does, it will pounce on you, sometimes even harder than before. And something will happen. Something will trigger a memory. Something will trigger uh, a reaction. And there you are again. It's clawed its way out of the box. So you can't put it into a box and put it in the past until you have neutralized it and dealt with it and taken its power away. And once you have taken this this memory or this trauma's power away, once you have convinced yourself that I made it out the other side of this, I don't have to relive this over and over, I can put it over here, I can push it back to the person that, that, that made it happen and just say, here, this is not mine, I don't have to, I, I should have never had to deal with this and I don't have to accept this and I don't have to excuse you and you put it over there, then the chances are much better that it's not going to claw its way out of the box and, and jump on you. Uh, can you hear it scratching on the box sometimes? Sure. And that's, like I said, when you go through the process again of realizing that, yeah, there was anger. The anger was justified, but you can't pitch a tent and live there in anger. Um, I know someone who has been angry with someone for a really long time. Um, I don't know if they're as angry now, but they were. And they got very bitter toward that person. And they could really not even see any good things in that person. And, um, and, and I felt sad for them because that person that they were angry at did have good qualities. Were they justified being angry? I think so, yeah. I think that person did some things that, that were not that well advised. But I also think that person was inherently a good person and was trying their best. They had not had a very good example to, to live by. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, I think you sometimes do a disservice to yourself if you don't try to look at a person who has hurt you and see some good now, 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 now. I need to put a, uh, uh, I, I need to clarify that. And that is if you have been in a place where you have been physically or mentally severely abused, then you don't go back to that person and try to spend time with them. And, you know, anything that's going to put you in danger uh, mentally or physically, no, that's that's not what I'm telling you to do. I'm not telling you to go hang out and have coffee with your abuser. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that that person doesn't get to rule your life with their actions. You can put that back on that person and you can put that, you can deal with that, process that, and put it away and live your life in the present because there are so many people that love you and enjoy being around you and you don't want to um, not be able to to go out with them, have fun with them and experience them because this person and this hurt and this trauma is holding you captive. You want to be able to break free from that and the way to break free from that is to forgive, is to let go, walk away, forgive. Forgiveness is letting go. There's a saying in recovery, let go and let God. And, you know, whoever your higher power is, mine is God and Jesus. Um, I hand a lot of stuff, or, stuff over to God and Jesus when I am angry um, because I don't want to become bitter. I don't want to look around in my life and just see things that annoy me. That's a, gosh, that's an exhausting way to live. I know people who can't find any positives in their lives, and they always just look like they've been run over with a Mack truck and they literally just do this you know and, and I don't want to be that way I want to find positives in my life and sometimes the only way to do that is to take negatives and put them in their place and have you know realize that that is then and this is now now is that easy to do no no it is not easy to do that's why I said that it can take time it can take years months whatever um, but once you get it done, the weight that you feel that lifts off of you, almost physically, definitely spiritually and mentally, um, that you feel that just comes off of you is amazing. It's, it's, it, it just feels like you've been reborn almost. 
so I don't know if you have someone that needs forgiveness in your life and I don't know how deep that hurt is and how great the amount of forgiveness needed is because it is on a scale you know like we said there's one you know you might hide my car keys I'll be mad at you for 20 minutes you might do something like this person that hurt me and I might be mad for years so I don't know how big your hurt is so I don't know how long it's going to take you to process your way through it I will tell you this though um, if it is a big hurt a deep hurt a strong hurt a traumatic hurt then think seriously about going to see someone that can help you with this forgiveness because it might be that it's just too much to process on your own. You might need a little bit of help with it. And um, I would recommend that you go see, see, see someone who's a licensed professional. That doesn't mean that I don't think that clergy can't do a good job with this or that I think that um, friends can't help you. They absolutely can. But you might need someone who gives you a plan and a process and a way to work through it. And that might be a good idea. You're like, Terry, this was a little heavy for New Year's. I mean, I just thought you were going to say we should all lose weight. Well, yeah, I should lose weight. But I thought someone might need to hear this and that maybe in the new year they were thinking that they might want to work on this. And if that's you, then I want to tell you that I hope and pray that this works out for you, that you're able to process your anger and maybe your fear and that you can step away from this hurt that you can forgive the person that hurt you remember that doesn't mean excuse that just means you walk away and let go you don't harbor anger bitterness you just let it go you leave it there and I hope that you can do that and I hope that this year is going to be a good year for you you're going to find things to smile about. You're going to find things to laugh about. You're going to spend time with friends and family. And it's going to be a good thing for you. <sighs> I think that's pretty much it. I think the next thing that I do is going to be my What Did I Get for Christmas haul. And I think it probably is going to be ASMR because I got a lot of neat things to tap on and crinkle. So there you go. So if you're interested in that, uh, that'll be coming up. And then I think probably after that will be another true crime. So if you're a true crime fan, uh, there'll be one in the works probably in a couple or three weeks. And also I have a birthday coming up, so I probably won't be posting the second week in January or so. So yeah, gotta, gotta get my birthday on. All right, you guys, I hope that you have a good rest of the day and a good rest of the week, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.